We are here tonight because 90 years ago, on January 28th, 1928, 100 women met at the request of the Board of Trustees of Gordon College and the uh, Gordon College of Theology and uh, Missions. That was a precursor to Gordon College and Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary. They met to consider starting an organization that supported students and promoted theological education. If you would watch a video that was created by the Women's Council board members about 10 years ago to celebrate the 80th anniversary of Women's Council, you would hear a theme emerge. And that theme is, it's always been about the students, supporting the students, and promoting theological education. The support has varied. The method of support has varied over the years. It's varied from making draperies for a chapel to outfitting dormitories to purchasing magazine subscriptions and phonographs, record players, and uh, also hosting welcome events for new students to what we do today, which is host programs and luncheons to raise scholarship funds. And while the method has varied over the years, the purpose has always been the same, to support students and promote theological education. And that's why we're here tonight. We'll hear some music, and I hope you'll be encouraged, but really, it's about supporting the students and promoting theological education. Later in the concert, we will take an offering to benefit the Women's Council Scholarship, which provides partial tuition for Gordon-Conwell students, six Gordon-Conwell students, in the partnership program. We hope that you will give generously in support of the students in theological education. 100% of the gifts that we, will re we receive will go toward the Women's Council Scholarship Fund. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this occasion to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the Women's Council. We are so grateful for those who have served faithfully over the years and given to support students and promote theological education. And so we are thankful too uh, for the creative gifts that you give. And for those who are here tonight, uh, Peter and Adrian and Brittany and Wendy and Don and John, and for our student readers, Kelly and Corey, who will share their gifts with us. We ask that you would bless them with great joy as they encourage us by the Holy Spirit working through their gifts. We thank you for what you've done over the years for Women's Council. And we are grateful because it's really all about you. It's for your honor and your glory. And we commit our time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I uh, heard about uh, Peter Van Tyne's music uh, first when my husband slipped into our CD player one of Peter's prayerful improvisation CDs. My soul was soothed, and my heart was encouraged, and I trust that the same will be true for you this evening. Uh, we're so glad you're here, and I want to thank you for coming. So, Peter?
God creates all things. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. John 1, 1 through 5. The Lord merely spoke, and the heavens were created. He breathed the word, and all the stars were born. He assigned the sea its boundaries, and locked the oceans in vast reservoirs. Let the whole world fear the Lord, and let everyone stand in awe of him. For when he spoke, the world began. It appeared at his command. Psalm 33, 6 through 9. Ask now about the former days, long before your time, from the day God created human beings on the earth. Ask from one end of the heavens to the other, has anything so great as this ever happened, or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire? Has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation, by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, or by great and awesome deeds. You were shown these things so that you might know that the Lord is God. Besides him, there is no other. Deuteronomy 4, 32 through 35. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Psalm 139, 13 through 18. But now this is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. You are precious and honored in my sight, and I love you. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made, from Isaiah 43.
please join us in singing as we worship our great God. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power Every creature 
God, you are beyond anything that we can imagine. The wonders of your hands, the power, the majesty, everything that you've created, everything that we see and we know about has come from you, Lord. And we acknowledge that now, you, the, the master creator, the orchestrator of this wonderful symphony that you have ordained. And we are so thankful, Lord, that everything you've created has been created through Christ. For it's in him and by him and for him that we live. Come, Lord Jesus, even now. It's in your name we pray, amen. You may be seated.
so quiet. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for being here and for supporting this wonderful benefit. Um, the Women's Council asked me to just share a little bit about my creative process, and I thought it would be maybe interesting to some of you to talk a little bit about improvisation. And um, as, as it's common with me when I prepare for a concert, um, the, the piece that I usually get the most anxious about is this. <laughs> That's why I like it. It's nice and safe over there. <laughs> but um, so I thought earlier, earlier today, I thought, well, I'll just improvise what I'm going to say in the spirit of the evening. That doesn't go over well. So, um, but I thought I would just tell you a little bit about uh, my process um, because it all starts with improvisation. Um, as a composer, you're often searching for ideas. And as a believer, who's a composer, um, you're often asking the Lord to give you some ideas and seek the Holy Spirit to help you and inspire you. And a lot of that actually transpires out of, for me anyway, sitting at the piano and just pouring my heart out on the keys and playing. And sometimes it'll be a little nugget and sometimes it'll be a whole piece. Um, I remember when I was younger, I heard uh, the com famous composer Aaron Copland give a lecture about com his composition uh, process. And I remember thinking, oh, I used to see composers sit at their desk and write these, you know, write notation and just, it would all come out of their head and they'd write it down. They never sit at the piano. I thought, I'm never going to be a good composer. And then Aaron Copland said, oh, I, I always write at the piano and I always improvise first. So I thought, okay, if he can do it, I can do it. <laughs> so that, that really actually gave me freedom to start to figure out my own creative process. And as I started to do that in the church, what I found happening was that um, the Holy Spirit really became an integral part of that process. Uh, so, um, so one thing about improvisation that I don't know if you all know, but oftentimes some people will think that improvising is just making up stuff randomly on the spot. Now, the definition is spontaneous creation. So improvisation is spontaneous creation. You're creating something on the spot, spontaneously in the moment. But it's not just randomly throwing notes out there. I mean, if I just went over and, you know, oh, I improvised and I made something. That's not really what improvisation is. Improvisation is, um, spontaneously creating music but within a structure and often that structure is influenced by outside um, influences uh, so if you're if you're a jazz artist and you're playing with a jazz band um, usually the uh, the song you're playing will provide the harmonic structure for you to improvise around so um, or it will provide the rhythm for you to improvise around or the feel or um, the theme, and so it's not just randomly um, throwing notes out there. There's a book by N.T. Wright, the theologian N.T. Wright, and uh, it's called The Last Word, and it's really regarding scripture and how scripture, um, how we're to look at the importance of scripture. But he talks about improvisation, which I thought was interesting. And he says, the notion of improvising is important but sometimes misunderstood. As all musicians know, improvisation does not at all mean a free-for-all where anything goes, but precisely a disciplined and careful listening to all the other voices around us, and a constant attention to the themes, rhythms, and harmonies of the complete performance so far, the performance which we are now called to continue. At the same time, of course, it invites us, while being fully obedient to the music so far, and fully attentive to the voices around us to explore fresh expressions, provided they will eventually lead to the ultimate resolution. And I like that phrase, fresh expressions. Um, and that's what I would call, what I, I would call freedom in stru within structure. Um, so 
So what happened a, a number of years ago is that I, I created a CD. It was my first solo piano CD. had some other instruments on it back in 2000. And it was very reflective music and more intimate in uh, setting. And what I found is people started to listen to it. I started hearing stories of um, people saying that, um, well, there was one story in particular that struck a, a chord, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> but there was one story in particular that uh, a mother at our church at the time came up to me and said, you know, my, my daughter has had problems with anxiety and um, she comes home from school and she can't uh, calm down, she can't sleep at night. And she said, we put your CD on and she's been able to sleep at night. And that was really a blessing for me and kind of the start of really exploring what it meant to create music in the spirit. Uh, because I really felt that that's what was happening was that the spirit and the Lord was using this music in a way that I couldn't even imagine. I was creating music because I'm a musician and I express myself through music. But the Lord was using it in some different way. So now back to improvisation, what I found in church 10 years later is that I would sit down at the piano during communion or during a prayer time, and for lack of not preparing sometimes, <laughs> I would sit at the piano and I would improvise. And often the case would be after the service, someone would come up to me, oh, I love that piece you played. What's the name of it? <laughs> uh, you tell me. <laughs> you know? And again, that, that time for me was a period where I discovered that improvisation wasn't just a time to create music or to explore different expressions, but for me to commune with the Lord. And, and I always had felt that sitting at the piano and playing the piano was my closest place to God that I would pray at the piano, I would listen to his heart. In fact, I came across this quote the other day by Kelsey Grammer, of all people. <laughs> but it's a great quote, quote. Prayer is when you talk to God. Meditation is when you're listening. Playing the piano allows you to do both at the same time. And I love that quote because that's exactly how I felt all these years is that that is my spot where my quiet time with the Lord. Not so quiet because there's music going on, but, but it is the place where I can just freely express myself. So when I started doing these prayerful improvisations uh, recordings, the idea all came out of this thought of communing with the Lord at the piano, often in a service, wor worship, and trying to really listen to what the Holy Spirit was saying in uh, the recording. So I have a number of recordings, prayerful improvisations. There are three recordings I've done so far. I'm going to be doing one more in the spring. But three recordings I've done so far that are all improvised. And I would, I would take time. I would take about four weeks, and I would sit at the piano. I would have my Bible. I would have a journal. And I would just sit there and pray and listen and then just start playing. And I would play for a couple hours and record all of it. And for improvising... Um, that, that became a process for me of creativity, which I hadn't really explored until uh, more recently, at least as far as recording improvisations. The other pieces, some of the pieces you heard, like the, the piece that Brittany did a great job singing, Psalm 3, that, um, that's all written out, and I took time and worked on that deliberately like a composer is supposed to do that. But again, all the ideas came from sitting at the piano and improvising and really trying to listen to what the Lord wanted for that psalm. So as I was doing this, I'll, this is the last thing I will say, is that um, as I was thinking about improvisation in regards to the musical aspects, it really got me thinking about improvisation in our faith and what that means, how that relates. And I know it sounds a little strange, maybe at first, but this scripture really spoke to me from Romans 6. Thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you've come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. 
what? <laughs> we've been set free, but we're slaves, okay? Now that you've been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That seems so contradictory on the surface, but it is so true that when we, when we surrender to the Lord and we turn from sin, we are no longer slaves to sin. But being a slave to Christ, there's freedom. And that's the beauty of it. It's, again, it sounds like this, this oxymoron that we're slaves but we're free. But thinking of improvisation, again, reminded me of this and made the connection for me that when I'm improvising in music, it's not just a free-for-all. It's not whatever goes, but it's within a structure. And this is what the Lord has told us through his word, that when we follow Christ, righteousness is within a structure, and there's freedom within a structure, and that structure is found in Jesus Christ. So when we translate that to our lives as as Christians, as we go out into the world, we find ourselves improvising in all these different moments. Think of when you come across somebody who is hurting and needs just a gentle touch or a gentle word. We don't all ha always have, you know, we're not going down the checklist, oh, like I said this, I said that, and I did this, but we're improvising. We're improvising in our faith, in that relationship. Um, there's so many things that happen in our lives where we come across that we're not necessarily prepared for, but the Lord equips us because we are now slaves to Christ, slaves to righteousness, and there's freedom in that. So that's, that's all really I wanted to say. Um, I hope you're enjoying this evening. Um, so let's just, let's just pray real quick. And Oh, no, I, well, let me pray first, and then I want to do one, one interesting thing with you all. Um, Lord, we thank you that you've given us your word, that you've shown us true freedom in Christ, that when we turn from sin, we are no longer slaves. The chains are broken, um, we have, and we have freedom in you. Lord, help us to see that when we um, come into a situation where we have an opportunity to share our love for you, to share your love, to be vessels of your mercy and peace, and to find freedom in that, to find freedom where we can um, love one another as you have loved us. Thank you, God, for speaking to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. So one thing before we continue, and I was telling uh, Wendy earlier that this is one of those things that could be pretty good or it could really bomb, but I'm going to ask you to help me improvise something, and you're going to provide the structure for me. So what that means is what I need from you, and I'm going to just make note of this, what I need from you is five notes in the musical scale. A, I heard A. What? B flat. A, B flat, G, F, C. That's, wow, you guys aren't challenging. I was expecting Greg to throw something. B double flat. <laughs> or H. <laughs> so... Um, okay, and then I need a familiar hymn tune. What? Rock of Ages. I like that. All right, and then the last thing I need is um, a theme, not a musical theme, but a theme, like a subject. What? Flowing water. Okay. <laughs> it's the end of my career right here. <laughs> so, I am going to call on the Holy Spirit, please Lord help me, <laughs> to help me improvise a piece based on the notes A, B flat, G, F, and C. Sure, that sounds good. <laughs> At least it wasn't like... <laughs> um, and then rock, we'll get Rock of Ages in there, and this is called Flowing Water.
But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us, as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Ephesians 2, 4 through 10. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. James chapter 1, 17 through 18. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 6. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. 1 Peter 4, 10 to 11. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. From Colossians 3.
Savior art thou if ever I loved thee my Jesus I'd like to thank you all for attending this evening and for your generosity. Thank you to our gifted musicians, to Peter and Brittany and Wendy um, and Adrian and John and Don for dancing. Thank you all. I'd like to invite you again to our 90th anniversary Women's Council Luncheon on Tuesday, April 5th. It will be a very special celebration. Please, please join us in the hall for refreshments and conversation after our closing prayer. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with the gift of music this evening. Be with our scholarship recipients, Manny, Charles, Kimberly, 
Esther, Kelly, and Corey. Thank you for their ministry and their willingness to serve in this community and around the world. Be with us this evening in our travels home, and may we continue to feel your peace and your comfort and strength in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>